it up like Jake Brock. Cause I can score with a second on the clock. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jay Brock. It's Clap It Up LA. You know what I'm saying? And I'm right here with none other than homie Airplane James, Mr. Eastside Special in the flesh. And yes, he still hurts, y'all. So make sure y'all go and run that project up. He is the first artist from the east side of South Central to have his own meal at Louisiana Fried Chicken. And we got to give a shout out to his family tree of New Orleans. In a word of bad luck, Airplane James sings, he raps, but he can also rap rap. You feel what I'm saying? And we got to give a huge shout out to him with his first placement on House Party. Shout out to Cal Maddox and LeBron James. And let's hold Airplane James accountable to his word. He says before it's all said and done, he's coming with a full R&B album. But until then, you should take it easy. You really hey, acting hey, like you don't hey, need hey, me. Hey. You trying to hurt me. You trying to believe me. You told me move on like it's easy. Like it's I messed the words right. up. I messed the words right up. <laughs> I messed the words up. How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, man. Oh, man. It's a pleasure to finally chop game with you. Yes, sir. Um, it's been a long time coming. But Airplane James has been a name that I've been hearing for year upon year upon year. Mm. You've been putting in that work. I have. How is life treating you today, Airplane James? Man, life is treating me well today, man. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. Came to fuck with you. I'm in a good spirit, good mood, man. That's always good, man. What got you in good spirits, bro? Man, life. Life's going good. Got me a new little pet. You know, I used to be scared of dogs. Yeah, you used to be scared of dogs, but you but you got one now. I got one now. That's so. crazy. Hey, how, how was your Valentine's Day? We fresh off of Valentine's Day. Man, my Valentine's Day was cool. I couldn't really do nothing because my dog's a puppy. Oh. I couldn't really go out with him and shit. So yeah. I made some homemade sangria. Yeah. And then I tried to watch you, yeah. but that shit was weak. Uh, who you was weak? Hey, I yeah. don't know. I don't know who watching you. The funny thing is, he said it and pointed to me. So I'm like, oh no, what you mean? I'm just, no, no, not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. Hey, man. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta jump into this, man. Um, childhood, mm -hmm. 1992. Yeah. Mom's had her situation. Yeah. You go foster care, adopted by a lady that you can, can would consider grandma who would give you that name airplane because she said your head was as wide as an airplane. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you never met your dad. Have you met your dad yet? Mm -mm. Okay, let me ask you something. You are a father. Mm -hmm. How determined did that make you to make sure that you be in your children's life? Um, Very determined. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just because I never had that, so... When, when I'm raising them and looking at them, I just want to give them everything that I didn't have in that department. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a kid that feel like I didn't really miss out on anything. Mm -hmm. Like, having a dad really didn't do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had my grandma, I had uncles, I had father figures. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I really necessarily missed out on anything. Mm -hmm. I feel that. Um, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was raised by my step pops. I had my step pops. Shout out to all the great step pops out there. But I feel like I, you know, raising my own son. Mm -hmm. My son been in the house, daddy, 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 mommy, mommy, mommy. I feel like a kid just wants to be able to call on their parent mm -hmm. and for their parent to be there. True. You feel what I'm saying? So having my dad choose not to be in my life was just kind of always a chip I had on my shoulder. You know him? You feel what I'm saying? I know who my dad is. Mm. I know exactly who my dad is, and a lot of people know who he is. <laughs> a lot Damn. of people know who he is. Yeah. And, and he chose not to be there? Yeah, chose not to be there. You know, And it, yeah. it's gotten to the point where we, we have conversations, and we talk about the same thing. And as a, at, when I was younger, I dealt with it. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, I was just like, you know what? I ain't even got the energy, bro. Yeah, it's like the situation with me. I don't know if he's living or dead. You know, this was yeah. 92. Yeah. Moms was going through her situation. She met him during the situation, you know. Yeah. Who knows how that shit happened, you know? But, yeah. you know, I don't even know his name. She don't you, know his name either. And it's crazy because you might have some brothers and sisters that you just don't know about. Right. Ain't that, that something? That's crazy. Now, when you now you did meet moms uh, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Is this where you would discover your New Orleans family? You know, you had a great, a great auntie that lived to be 112 years old. Yeah. Man, how the fuck do you know? You're like the fucking hood. <laughs> <laughs> he had a great... Bruh. A great auntie to live hunting, and then you also would meet your grandma Delilah Murphy and grandma Thelma Williams, right? Mm -hmm. And you said you always had this thing for New Orleans, okay? And we, you know, and it's just ironic how he has this Louisiana fried chicken special. You know what I'm saying? This That's is just crazy, crazy. Right? you know what I mean? I'm so, <laughs> so what was it like 
you know, I, I know you said mom, she can actually talk, you know, and y'all relate because both of y'all have bad sense of direction. Mm -hmm. What is it like when you meet when you meet your mom for the first time? Uh, because I remember I kind of when I met my dad, I was kind of like, I feel like he's like my big brother. Mm -hmm. So what is it like when you meet your mom for the first time? Was it like, ah, this is my mom? Or was it kind of more so like, who is this lady type? Oh, man, I don't really even know how to explain those emotions. Um Mm, okay, I feel that. But we can go into it. Um, it's just, I just, was, I kind of was shocked, you know. Like I never thought I would meet the lady. I don't know if she was alive or what. Yeah. Um. So when I got the letter, it was like a whole process. So I got the letter from um, the the foster agency. Like you know, do you want to find your mom? Mm. They sent me one letter when I was like seventeen, and at that time, I guess I was just immature. Not I was like, man, fuck that. You yeah. know, like I didn't yeah. did it this long without mm -hmm. you. So. But then, you know, curiosity got the best of me. I'm like, damn, what if I got siblings, you know? What does she look like? You Facts, know, what, yeah. what is, you know, my real family? Yeah. Where, where do they come from? What's the background? So yeah. I was like, damn, I started to get more curious. And then 19, they sent me another um, letter. And I was like, okay, I do want to find her. Wait, so, so that was a two-year gap? Two-year gap. Okay, because I've seen you talk about this, but I'm thinking that maybe it was a couple months. That was a two-year gap. It was a two-year gap from them sending me the letter, and then yeah, it was yeah. like a seven, eight-month gap from actually finding her because they sent me a letter. Oh. They gave me her number and her address. So then I go to the address, and I'm like, I go over there, and shit. I'm, trying, I'm talking to security guard or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, is there Lana Williams live here? They're yeah. like, nah, she moved six months ago. Mm. So then I'm like, damn. They're like, yeah. well, who are you? I'm like, shit, I'm her son. It was like, her son. I'm like, like <laughs> what? Yes, she has a son. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. I'm like, man, if she ever in the neighborhood or if she ever comes back around, you know what I'm saying? Um, let her know I came by. I gave her my number. Gave yeah. him my number and shit. Yeah. He's like, man, she be going to the church down this down this way. So you know, if I see her, I will give you her number. Mm. And seven, eight months passed by. I just get a random call one day. Like, yeah. is there a Wendell? Is this Wendell? I'm like. Yeah, she's like, it's your mom. <laughs> hold like, on, hold on. It was yeah, crazy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, she, hold from on. that point forward, like I was just I didn't say nothing. Yeah. She just kept talking. Yeah. She talked me all the way to her front step. She was like, Yeah, and this is my address, and you can come see me at this yeah. time. And I was like, all I said was okay. Like, so yo, so yo, so your initial reaction was just freeze. Like Yeah, I was frozen. Yeah. And even when I went to see her, I was just like, damn, this shit crazy. Like I can't believe I have a mom. Yeah, and then she told me I had a sister. Mm. Did you meet your sister yet? Yeah, I met my sister. I okay, went to Hawaii with cool. my sister. Yeah. On some dope ass bonding Word. shit. Mm -hmm. So okay, so when you meet moms, man, how long did it take for you to develop the love? Because you lived your whole life without her. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I and, and naturally we have a a space for our parents. Mm -hmm. But how long did it take you to like develop that love and, and develop that want to be around her? Mm. It kind of it kind of like life kind of brought us together, kind of because at the time. Um, I was living with my grandma and then she ended up moving to Vegas. So then she was like, you know, you can come live over here. I was young nigga. I didn't really have no motion at the time. Yeah. So I'm just like, not going to Vegas. I don't know nobody in Vegas. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. My mom stayed in the jungle. So she was just like, you can come stay here. Yeah. But it's a stranger. You don't even yeah, know this yeah, person. Yeah. You right, know? right, right. But I had, no, you know, I wanted to pursue music. So I was like, yeah. shit, fuck it. Yeah. And I went over there. And that's when we learned each other. Yeah. So did it take you a minute to just get comfortable and be you or, you know? For sure. Yeah. Like that whole that whole situation, that whole time, I was yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. And she was like, just all like, you my baby. And you kind of like, ah. Yeah, I dealt with a lot of that. Yeah. Like, early on, like, like I haven't even had this conversation with her, so I hope she didn't take this wrong way. But it was yeah. a lot of that in the beginning, trying to re-raise me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm already. In your way. I'm, I'm already. Raised, you know, yeah. or it was a lot of like, if she could, I feel like she would save me. Yeah. But I didn't need to be saved, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had a yeah. good childhood, I, yeah. I didn't fall into gangs, yeah. you know. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, what I'm saying all of that shit. So, like, it was a lot of times where she, where I wouldn't come home or some shit. She called me, like, are you hanging up with gang members? Oh, or, you know, yeah, like, yeah, and it's yeah. like. Relax. I'm a grown man now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, let's yeah. just pick up mm. the relationship from where it's at now. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. she understands that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, let's just be who we are yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Dang. And then that made me love her more, too. Yeah. Because she had to respect it. She had to respect that you just got here. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel that, man, and that has to be tough as a parent trying to get your child to to, to fall in love with you when it's so much that's just not there no more. Mm-hmm. That got to be tough, man. So you spent a lot of time growing up on Maine and 83rd, and you consider this a janky place. Yeah. Speak on what janky activity is. Oh, uh, man. Well, first of all, we live like smack dab in like the middle of three hoods. So, you oh, know, yeah. Bloods to the left, Crips to the right, yeah. Hoovers to the back of you. Yeah. And it's, you're in the middle of that. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're just going up, going to the store, seeing people get popped or, you know, getting banged on, all that type of shit. It's yeah. just like, man, it's janky over there. Yeah. It's just, see, there's these are the words of the ghetto, okay? Janky, crafty, and it's just one, one more. You, if you hear that word, you just know you got to get away and stay away. See, I personally been growing up hearing crafty. When you say some, you say a group of people are crafty. Yeah. So I don't even like what I should just sound. Yeah, like. it just sounds like let me stay away from this activity right mm-hmm. here. So what kept you away from being in the hood? I kind of can understand you seeing what's going on. So it's kind of like I don't want to be a part of this. But what kept you strong enough? To stay independent and say, you know what, I ain't gonna join the gang. I'm gonna just do me. I wasn't me. always that strong, though. You know, yeah. I had to bump my head a couple of times. Yeah. You know, um, I definitely was, you know, getting involved and in, you know hanging with you know when your friends, yeah. your I think age, we all and did. you go out, you know, yeah. you go outside, you do what they do. Yeah. Um, so, but it was it was some basically some shit happened. You know, I was trying to be in that life or whatever. Um, some shit happened. The niggas ended up coming to my grandma's house. Mm. And yeah. so my grandma not knowing what's going on. I'm trying to lie to her, like, man, some shit going on at school. But my uncle already know what the deal was, you know, yeah. what they were saying outside, like, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so they were like, so she was like, he was like, man, pack your shit. You coming to live with me. What? So well, right then and there, yeah, I had to move. I moved to Palmdale. Yeah, I see that you spent a lot of time in Palmdale. You would be going yeah. back and forth to Palmdale. It seemed like a whole lot. I yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that kind of saved me right there because, you know, yeah. some of my friends, you know, right, right after I made that move, like my uncle just always gave me game. Like, man, That's like you're going to like the path that you choose. Like, you know, you choose a good path. You're going to see like, you know what I'm saying? People going to be flying like falling like flies type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And damn, like, man, one of my best friends ended up getting 12 years like. Mm. Right after I moved to Palmdale. Mm. And I was with him every day. That's crazy. Probably would have been with him that that day. day. For sure. For sure. So him getting 12 was like. That's tough, bro. Especially at a young age. Now, okay. Airplane James, is ball still life? Ball? Mm Mm-mm. Oh, it's not life no more. But let me tell you something. Airplane James, at one point in time in Airplane James' life, Ball was life, and he broke his friend's arm in middle school. Man, how the fuck? No, I didn't. Let's, let's, let's okay, because I back. see you. I see you. I, they say you broke his arm. I did not break that man's arm. <laughs> okay, so what happened? What's man, the breakdown of this? First, what was it? Were you hacker shack out there? I was not hacker shack. <laughs> I was really good. He was just, bro, if anything, he was a hacker shack. <laughs> so you feel me? I just gave him a little shoulder and I ain't expect him to fall back and he broke his arm. Ooh, I ain't break his arm. Hey, to this day, he will not, he will not take That's the third, that's the uh, third day of school. You know what I'm saying? You're oh, like the man. new kid on the block. Nigga, yeah. they can, you know what I'm saying? Pump some fear in your chest. I had to let him know what it was. Oh, man. Airplane James, man. Don't play with him on that court, man. man that's crazy that you even know that story. <laughs> now, um, you went to Palms Middle School? No. Nah, okay. I went okay. to a couple middle schools. I went okay. to um, this place called Mother of Sorrows. It's right there on 87th and Main. Mm-hmm. Um, they kicked me out. Oh, man. Dog. For some, not even, it wasn't even my fault. Yeah. Then I went to Bethune. Then in the middle of Bethune, that's when I moved to Palmdale. And then okay. I, Finished middle school and then summer high school in Palmdale. Then I came back. Okay, got you. So when did you win that uh, that, that the essay contest? That was seventh, seventh grade. grade. Mother yeah. of Sorrows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now this essay contest. What did that prove to you when you won this contest? Man, that let me know that I could really write. That mm. I really had a fucking ability to write, and it wasn't even on some. Rap. I mean, I always wanted to do music. Yeah. But then I was like, like when I won that shit, I was thinking about doing like fucking short stories and shit like that. Writing like, a book, being an artist. You feel me? Yeah. But yeah, that oh. definitely put a battery in my back. Okay, so if Airplane James could write a book, which is is probably not too far-fetched from what you do now, mm-hmm. what would that book consist of? 
I don't know. It'd be some black superhero shit though. Uh, for sure. Airplane James uh, with, with with the cape on or something. Or? Not me. Oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm making about somebody else. We deal with okay. so much real shit in life, like Mr. Manchester. I like to read about fucking fictional shit. Yeah. So to, so like Harry Potter's up your lane? No. Oh, okay. Damn. I mean, that's fiction. That's like one of the best ones. But you know, what I did like growing up. I liked the fucking Lemony Snicket. Um, a series of unfortunate events. I don't even know what that is. I heard of the name Lemony Snicket. Them books man. right there was fire. Yeah. Oh man, you know when we grew up in elementary school, reading Junie B. Jones, uh, uh, Goosebumps, stuff Goosebumps. like that. Goosebumps. I tried. I, the first book I really read in school was Monster Cody's book. I read that from Damn. front to back. I just read that recently, bro. Wonderful book. It, it, I mean, you know, when but he, it, that shit just—it's uh, the allure of like that shit draws you in. Yeah, like. the stories you can see, you can see the situation. Like I remember the situation where they was at the store and somebody came out of the store, they kidnapped them. You can see it, mm-hmm. and you know, I I really enjoyed that book, man. Shout out to Monster Cody. Now you got a thing for gummy bears, and and I think Nicki Minaj was like one of your first real crushes, something like My that. My nigga. <laughs> 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 hey, this is wild. <laughs> you must have been on my Facebook or something. That's Ooh, what the fuck. Yeah, hey, man, I know, you know. your sources. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga really did his own work. <laughs> yes, man. Oh man, Nikki was for sure one of my first crushes, man. Hey man, what itty so- bitty piggy? Yeah. yeah, Nikki Minaj was the coldest in the game. Okay, so when it comes to female artists, mm-hmm. who was your top five in female artists ever? Ever. Damn. I know Missy Elliott gotta be up in there. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Okay, that's that's good. You can't argue with that. Nikki. Nikki. Damn. You gotta say Missy Elliott, bro. I mean, you can't. Yeah, Missy yeah, Elliott. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's easy. Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim. You just gotta name the queen next. That's just all you can do is name the queen next. Who? Queen Latifah. But you might not want to do that. That's that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Shit, I put Eve. I put I fucking put Eve in there. You know, oh Eve. Shout out to Eve. Eve is the goat. I put Eve, Eve in there. is the goat. Eve is the goat. Man, I remember uh uh see watching Eve on Barbershop. Eve Eve was doing her thing. And I know you wanna you wanna also get into acting mm-hmm. as well. And that's a beautiful thing. Like I've I've acted on a movie and I'm yeah, I actually acted on a movie, um, all good in LA too, and they they uh they debuted it in a movie theater. So it was cool to watch myself on a, on a big screen in the movie that theater. Shout out to Bro Cody and T, man. That's hard. Um, now, in 2008, you were a part of Camp Kilpatrick, and you spoke on Gridiron Gang, the movie being based off this camp. Mm-hmm. Now, what was your experience like uh, with Camp Kilpatrick? It was terrible. I mean, Damn. it started off terrible, but it got better. But, you know, I mean, that shit is jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know because I never, I ain't been there and I pray Yeah, so I the movie, the that. movie is like, cap. Is, is it like corny? No, the, yeah, the movie is definitely fabricated a bit. Like, okay. You ain't, it ain't all that freedom. Mm-hmm. You know, don't get it twisted. It's jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, so, okay. you can do sports and shit, yeah. but it's jail. So, okay. you want to go home, ultimately. Yeah. So, speak on a day, a full day in Camp Kilpatrick. What mm-hmm. is this from wake up to go back to sleep? What is You wake this? up at like, 5 30 six, mm-hmm. sit up on your bed i was kp i was kitchen patrol you feel me oh okay so you was in there cooking <laughs> yeah no i wasn't cooking oh okay. I, w- I was serving the food oh okay okay so i wake up like i gotta get up like 5 30 yeah get down to the kitchen prepare yeah. it yeah serve the food you want to be kp though because you get all the extra shit you can go in the kitchen get you some gatorade oh you can go up and get nice and chunky niggas in there drinking water (laughs) 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 but no so we do that boom i think you go back you get the you get to play on the playground and shit and then you go to school get out of school at like one go to lunch come back play some more then you go to dinner then after dinner you you can play to like wow like call bedtime at like nine. Yeah, go to sleep, wake up and do it again. So was it was it, it was it like dangerous in there? Was there fights or arguments going oh, on? Oh yeah, it was definitely phase getting ran. Yeah, for sure. Damn. So how long were you uh, involved with Camp Kilpatrick? Uh, I did th- three, 
three and a half months. Yeah. And when that was done, he was like, I ain't never coming back. I almost went back the next day. Oh, my gosh, bro. <laughs> but that Come right on, there, bro. after there, after that, that's when I, was, I turned my life. Right? I was like, no new, more. That was a new leaf right it there. A new I leaf. literally almost yeah. went back the next day. That's crazy. Do you mind talking about what happened? Yeah, so I had a girlfriend at the time. Uh-huh. She was top sick. You feel me? Like, bruh. Before that was a thing. Bro, before that was even a thing, yeah. like, I'm like, damn, half the trouble I got into because of her. So, oh, man. Man. So I get out, fresh out. My granny give me, like, I don't know, like $700 or something to go to school. Like, go get some back-to-school shit, get fresh. She just gave you the money. Yeah. As a kid. Yeah. That's different. <laughs> yeah. So my girl at the time, like, man, let's go spend that on some hotels. Like, you feel me? Like, what? look. Let's hit the mall. We gonna just buy one thing, buy like one of them bags, and then we gonna we gonna grab the rest of the shit. You gonna be fresh, but we gonna steal this shit. <laughs> she put you up to no good, Bruh. So I put some pants. I put some pants up under my. I put some LRG pants up under my shits. Oh, put my pants on. Oh, we we could have been we could have been about it there. She's like, let's go to Forever Twenty One. I'm like, for what? <laughs> go to Forever Twenty One. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder. Like, uh, yo, can we talk to you real quick? I'm like, oh, oh no. I'm looking like, they're like, yeah, don't even run because we got people over there, people over here. Hey, like, ready. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. They take me to the back. Do you imagine how I'm feeling? Yeah, I well, literally you know. just got out yesterday. Yeah, I know your heart is in your stomach. I'm like, wow. But you know what's crazy? I really was just like, damn. This is this is that's crazy as a kid. Like thinking like, well shit, hopefully they send me back to Kilpatrick because I'm already even got acclimated with that yeah, you know right. but Let's i was more that. so scared of my grandma yeah of them calling my grandma and knowing she has so much high hopes for me yeah getting out of that place because it went from night to day like literally like yeah. i won that essay contest and then shortly after i got kicked out of that school and then after i got kicked out of that school it was just like a tumble effect mm. so you can imagine she she's on this high like man, he's gonna do so well so when i got out you know telling her i'm gonna change and blah 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 and then I'm like, damn. That I happens. didn't really care about me, per se. I just was like, man, I don't want them to call her. So they're like, man, anybody got over $100 in, in clothes and damages and shit, y'all going to jail. Oh, man. So I'm like, you know, you remember LRG was. Yeah, yeah, LRG was the thing. Expensive. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck. He's like, you got something? I was like, yeah, I got some. I got some pants on up under. That was like, all right, well. So then I took it off. I took the the fucking uh, name tag. That shit was like eighty nine ninety nine. I was Ooh. like, oh, oh wow, you got away well, with. She this. going to jail for sure. She got a whole bag full of shit. Oh, <laughs> she going to jail for oh sure. bro. So he barely escaped by bruh. eleven dollars, bro. Wait, so so you said anybody up in here? Was it more than you? What you mean? Was it more people in there than It was just me and her. Oh, okay. It was just me and okay, her. Okay, they said it. I like, was with the homies, but shit, they, they got away. Oh, yeah, that's but, how it goes. you know. Yeah, that's how it goes. So they took her. They called her to come get me. Man, she came and got me. And Damn, shit, she I went kinda, to jail. She went to jail. Wow. Mm, wow, that's crazy. Have you talked to her or her from her since? Nah, man, she be following, like, she be, like, following me, from me like, sometimes, and then I'll see her page, but I don't, like, respond to nothing. Yeah, yeah. You just got to protect your energy, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So speaking on the good side of things, two years later, he would create Street Native Music Group. And Damn. that was really where you would begin to really take off with this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Street Native Music Group. Mm-hmm. Describe the name. Why, why did you come up with Street Native as the name? Damn, man. You're going way back in the vault. Um, Damn. Like, I just always wanted to be, like, on some street shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Street. Like, I was like, would it be, a, like, a dope way to be, like, on some street shit? You yeah. know? But it was really supposed to be, like, on some clothes. Like, I always wanted to do merch type shit, even uh-huh. as a youngin. So, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, Street Native was really going to be some clothes shit. But mm-hmm. then I did a freestyle of uh, Hard in the Paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, all the homies on the block heard that shit, and it was like, man, this shit hard. Yeah. So, my best friend, who he said I broke his arm... <laughs> Shout out to bro. He like, uh, man, let's just really do this shit. Let's take this shit serious. Like, yeah. so, nigga, we went to Home Depot. We went half, got all the studio equipment. I already had, like, I think I had a laptop. Yeah. But that's it. 
Like he, I ain't even had the money to buy the speakers. He bought the speakers, and shit. That day, twelve twenty seven. I don't remember the year, but December twenty seventh was the date for show because I wrote it on the studio, mm-hmm. and we built it, and then that was the day Street Native was created. Wow, and you did the hard to paint around the time. Everybody was doing the hard to paint. Hard to paint was going crazy around that time. Now, I wonder where all them niggas at, man, today. Yeah, man. I don't hopefully they still alive. Nah, hopefully they so. was gang banging yeah, on them motherfuckers, wasn't they? With all capital letters, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean everybody face was on the camera. I was like, and Jesus. they was chunking, they was chunking it, it was up a heavy. Nigga from Foldies, man, he had the hardest one, bro. Yeah, the guy from Foldies, y'all remember that? And yeah, they was out there thick. I don't think, no, actually, I think he, I don't think that he was a part of the gang. He was just like, and you know, from the area. Yeah. But that shit was hard. Yeah. Yeah. He, he went crazy, man. Tiger started some shit. Yeah. Didn't Tiger, he? Tiger did for sure, man. He set a trend. Now, we got to talk about this. 2012, we get President Obama elected. Did you really go in front, in the middle of Broadway and do a cartwheel? I might have. Oh, I might have. I might have done that. <laughs> That's so long ago. <laughs> what would make you do a cartwheel in the middle of Broadway? Because I mean, I would imagine not wanting to step outside over there. No, that's fine. It's, fine. it's it's janky, but that's my area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like it's like it's like you from the city, right? So yeah. somebody from the outside might be like, I ain't going there. Yeah, it's places, like, yeah. Like, I'm not going to Watts. It's regular to me. I'm not going to Watts. But see, I feel like I grew up, I feel like I grew up. In a neutral spot in Inglewood, uh, I heard before we moved there it was like going down, but by mm-hmm. the time we got there, it was it was pretty neutral. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, I, I've seen some stuff in the streets. I've been in certain areas and stuff to where Why it goes you not going down. To Watts? Why did I say that? And this is the guy. You know what? Because I don't know nobody over there. That's a good answer. And because I, I guess you do got to know somebody. And and, and, and and because I've heard nothing but. Monster stuff about Watts, bro. But everybody I talk to in interview, they always say like, "Bro, it's not, it's not that bad." But they do recommend you know somebody over there. Yeah, you definitely gotta know somebody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't mean to offend nobody, nothing like that. But I'm not, I'm not from that area, bro. I didn't, I didn't yeah. grow up in that type of. We gotta change that, man. Yeah, yeah. I know Dom Kennedy made a song about that too. Like everybody's scared to go to Watts. Yeah. But like wrong. I said, if like he and you even just said it, if you don't know nobody over there, then you probably shouldn't go. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> but shout out to Watts, though, man. Um, but we got to talk about Sandman. Um, rest in peace, Sandman the Goose. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I know he was he was an up-and-coming legend. I spent a lot of time over there because I went to Crenshaw. So mm-hmm. he would be around those people. And um, what what does Sandman mean to you? Man, that was one of the first niggas I seen really, I don't know, like as a kid, I'm like, I really thought he was like famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, he like, was there. He was on his way. You feel me? Yeah. So you know, and then just seeing him come around, like, and really doing the music, I'm like, damn, I could do the shit. That was the first person, like, besides like the bigger, bigger artists. That was some like yeah. first that I could like. You could actually see him go touch there. and yeah. be tangible. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And hear his music and yeah. shit like that. So yeah. damn, that's crazy. Yeah, rest, rest in peace, rest in peace, Sam, man. I All seen right. they doing like a documentary on him. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's dope. Shit, that's something that people should be able to look out for.